Good morning, everybody. Really appreciate you joining us today. I think we have some very useful information for you. Um, if you're running a business or in a key management position, this is really important information uh, that you can take back and, um, and work through your organization. Okay, so this is actually, it says the third webinar, but it's the fifth webinar in a series of six that we're doing. We have one more remaining uh, on the best practices for disaster recovery planning and testing. That will be on August 18th, so you'll get the email notification for that. And the previous uh, webinars, as Stuart mentioned, have all been recorded and posted to our website and our YouTube page. So if that's if you missed one or, or more of those, those are available for you to go and uh, and play back and, and get that material. So today uh, I've got a real quick introduction and then we'll get right into the topic of building a case for business continuity. I'll share some helpful resources and links to some additional information you'll find helpful. And then if you have any questions, uh, as Stuart said, you can type them into the question box and we'll address those at the end. Uh, again, my name is George Pasadakis. I'm the Director of Sales and Marketing at Apex Technology Management. We are based in Redding, California, but we have clients throughout California itself. You can see the team there. We're about 30 people. It's in front of the beautiful Sundial Bridge here in Redding. And uh, Apex has been in business for 25 years. This is our 25th anniversary. We're really proud of that fact. We've got a lot of years of a combined experience across the whole team. We provide both remote and on-site uh, managed services and IT support with 24-7 response with our help desk. As I mentioned, uh, we operate throughout California. Uh, Northern California and Central California are the core for us, uh, but we do have clients with sites in other uh, sections of the state. You can see the industry certifications that the team has. This is a growing number. Um, all of our technicians are constantly being challenged to uh, get to the next level and take some courses to broaden their skill sets. And you can see we've got a really good cross-section from Microsoft, Cisco, VMware, all the major players in the IT space. We've been listed as the one of the Pioneer 250 in the Computer Reseller News CRN list. And very recently we were named uh, on the MSP Mentor Top 501 Global list. We are number 258 in the world of IT managed service providers. So we're really proud of that fact and, uh, and running this organization out of Reading. Uh, we have a fully staffed, staffed network operations center and help desk. So you can see some of the team there. These are the people that are here all of the time taking calls from our clients. They don't go out in the field. We have other teams that do that. So when you call Apex for support, if you're one of our managed service clients, you're going to typically have somebody answer the phone within 17 seconds seconds. That's our current average. And uh, we'll create a ticket for you and, and start working on your issues. So we always have people here that you and your staff can call directly and, uh, and we can respond quickly. If uh, the need is determined to send somebody on site, we have another team of individuals that go out and work with this team and take care of any issues that come up. Very recently, actually June 24th, we moved into the new building that you see here. We're very excited to uh, have some additional space, a uh, much nicer facility for us to continue our growth and servicing our clients. Uh, we'll be having an open house probably toward the end of August. So if you're in the area, we'd love to see you there. We'll be sending out an invite to uh, our email list as well. Okay, let's jump right in. So business continuity is a very important topic that you should be having discussions with uh, inside of your organization if you have not. And what is business continuity? This is a way to ensure that even in the event of a disaster, major system failure, your business can continue to operate and service your clients or any other entities that depend on you. It's not just having a data backup system, and we'll get into some of the differences coming up here, but you really need to think about if there was a disaster or some major effect on any of the systems in my business, uh, how do I continue to operate through that disaster so that my customers that are depending on me can still utilize your services? Uh, why do you need it? The um, majority of large businesses, so banks, larger institutions, corporations, they definitely have business continuity plans. They've thought about this. They've probably hired consultants to help them create the plan, and they've thought about the different disasters they might face, and they've created a plan to determine what are the critical systems they need up and running in the event of a disaster. What we're finding is most small business small and medium businesses don't. They, they haven't thought about it. Maybe they've got a backup system, but 
you know, what, what does that mean to them? How long will it take to recover and resume operations if my business burnt down? If there was a hurricane, tornado, or here in California, most likely an earthquake. Well, how am I going to operate? How am I going to access my vital information? The statistics are roughly 40 to 60 percent of small businesses don't reopen their doors after disaster. This is not Apex saying this. This is the uh, SBA.gov, Small Business Association. And uh, it's, it's very critical to think of these things before the disaster strikes. If you do and you have a plan in place, you can be back up and running and, uh, and provide your services or products to your customers. There are three critical components of a business continuity plan that you need to think about. It's not just technology. Obviously, you have other things. You're not running your entire business 100% automated with no human interaction. So the number one most important thing to protect is your people your employees, your customers, how are they getting going to get through the disaster? Um, do they know what to do in the event of a disaster? What if the disaster strikes during business hours and you have your employees and possibly customers in your facility? You should think about these things ahead of time along with your information and your systems. And notice I said information and systems. Uh, some of your information may not be in your IT systems. It may be manual. You may have some, you know, files and folders, healthcare records that haven't been scanned into your system if you're in healthcare. You need to think about both. But more and more today, uh, organizations are relying on their technology, as we know. Um, so the systems you have, IT systems, are very important as well. And then the third element that you need to think about are the facilities. How, how much space do you need to run your organization in the event of a disaster? Uh, you can probably get by with less than you normally have on a daily basis, but you're probably going to need some space and that space needs to be secure, um, everybody needs to know where to go, so we'll, we'll drill into each of these in a little bit more detail, but it's not just your technology you need to think about with the business continuity plan. Okay, taking care of your employees. This is something you should think about ahead of time, and uh, I know some organizations we work with are doing a really good job about this. They've got uh, first aid kits, they have emergency supplies on site, flashlights, that type of thing. They've designated somebody to be the liaison that will communicate that information out to the different departments and staff members. Uh, but you should think about that. What do you need to have in your in your facility? You know, like your you you should have some emergency preparedness uh, equipment and supplies at home as well. But you know, your employees and you and your staff and possibly customers are in your facility and that potentially could be the time a disaster strikes. Having some first aid courses, hire somebody from the Red Cross or from uh, an organization in your area that can come in, go through some basic first aid skills with your staff or at least uh, some key staff members that you can appoint to have that responsibility. Um, it's a really good team building event as well. Uh, people, you, you know, you, sometimes you can learn a different side to people. You know, you may need to, to be prepared for uh, a staff member that may have a diabetic reaction. Do you know that? That's a potential. Do you have preparations? Do you know what to do? You know, in a major disaster, if you call 911, it may be a while before somebody gets there to help. So uh, the system could even be down. You may not be able to reach them. So you should definitely have some, some initial information and understanding about what you might be dealing with. You might need to have an automated electronic defibrillator at your facility. These are devices that if somebody has a heart attack or their uh, their heart stop, stops beating and you need to do CPR, this makes it much easier. Part of any CPR certification, they're going to go and show you how to use these devices. Lots of restaurants, libraries, public facilities have these available um, and you basically stick on some pads like you can see in that picture on the right and then the device talks to you and tells you what to do. So it's definitely uh, increases the chance of survival for somebody that needs it. Um, evacuation. If there's a, you know, you need to think about it ahead of time. If there is an earthquake, you're going to do. If there's a fire approaching your building, where, where is a safe location that you can convene at and start to take the next steps? Hopefully it's something within a short walking distance of your current facility um, that you'll be able to use. Uh, start thinking about these things ahead of time and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about actually creating the plan and this information needs to be documented and shared so that everybody is aware of it and uh, knows what to do. You can have a fire drill and the entire staff can go there and meet there and make sure uh, they know how to get there what they should do when they get there and who's going to be coordinating efforts from that point on. 
And then uh, lastly, as far as the employee side of it goes, you need a contact list, hard copy and in the cloud. Okay, you should have a hard copy available if you need to evacuate the building. That designated people can get to it and take it with you. You may not be able to pull up your system to uh, search for a contact online. You may not be able to access uh, a cloud system if your connect connections are down or your cellular carrier is also down. So you need to be thinking about these kind of things to um, to have some some solid continuity in place. Um, you should have your employees, key contractor information. Um, you know how are you going to reach them, and then significant others of your employees and staff. If there's a major disaster, you know your fa your staff member is going to want to reach out and try and contact their family, and the other way around, and you may need to help them do that. So it's good to have that information available. Okay, so the second leg uh, are your your IT systems and other business information that you're going to need. What what are the most critical assets you have to your business? Typically, it's the data you've you've collected and you need to service your customers. It's usually housed in some type of system. You may have a variety of systems, but only a few of them are critical to bring up and operate during a disaster, so that you can provide your core services. Uh, part of of creating a business continuity plan is to identify what do you really need to bring up uh, in the event of a disaster and build your plans around that. It's likely you don't need to bring up everything, but uh, you know, you're probably not going to have recruiting as a major component during a disaster. That can resume services after everything's back up and running and uh, everything's safe again. But you, you know, your core customer, CRM, uh, electronic health records, you know, depending on the type of organization you're part of, you need to be thinking about what do we need to bring up. Um, how long can you wait while you recover those systems and bring them back up? Um, some businesses are, are have a very time critical aspect to them. Uh, if you have an online shopping site and uh, or it requires customer service reps to get on the phone and and close a sale or um, service your clients. Uh, you know, today there's a lot of options available to prospects and customers. If they can't reach your business, how long are they going to wait before they move on to the next business? And what's the cost of that to your organization in losing your clients uh, or potential new business? Um, so those things need to be thought of and taken into account for your business continuity plan. You should document your key configurations and passwords. How are you going to get on these systems in the event of a disaster? If you can't look those up online, what are you going to do? How are you going to access that? So you need to think of that ahead of time. You know, uh, we've run into clients where they're you know, they call us and they're trying to restore uh, information from a backup, or they have uh, a break in and their all of their server infrastructure is stolen, and they don't know where their passwords are. It makes it very hard to recover from backup and resume operations. So you want to have that identified, stored in a separate, secure location. Part of the planning is to determine what your business is most at risk for. In California here, um, it's rare that we have hurricanes on, uh, you know, where, where most of our clients are at, but we do have earthquakes, we do have fires, particularly in Northern California, and, and now we're seeing this year down in, in Central and Southern California, there's been some big fires. Um, we've had clients completely uh, burnt down due to fires that, that started very near to them. Um, so uh, you need to assess where are you at, what are the most likely scenarios you need to plan for, and make sure that your business continuity plan addresses those and your staff is well aware of what to do in the event of, of one of those types of disasters. You should look at what does an hour or day of IT downtime cost your business. As I mentioned, you know it's not just the cost of recovering your IT services and critical systems. What's the impact on your clients? What's the impact on their business? Uh, you know, how long will one of your clients wait um, if they can't reach you or you can't access information to service them before they go to somebody else. It, you know, it's likely in the event of a disaster, if you're a service-oriented uh, organization, that they're going to reach out to you to help recover them or, you know, help provide services that they need and they depend on you to run their business and service their clients. So you really need to think about the whole chain of, of, uh, of businesses that are involved in your day-to-day -day operations. Okay, for the IT system side of it, you need to identify the solutions you have in place. Do you have a good uh, backup system 
and have you tested it? Do you know you can rely on it in the event of a disaster? Are you excluding certain files from the backup to save space that you may need it later or it may extend the time it takes to recover your information and restore your services? Uh, how are you getting that off-site? We run into lots of businesses that may be doing some backups but they're just storing the, the tapes or backup drives or whatever they're using for the media in a different location in their building. Uh, but what if the entire building is burnt down? What if all of your your systems are stolen and they take your box of backup tapes? You know, so today there's lots of solutions to automatically replicate that data off-site into the cloud, into multiple locations. Maybe you synchronize it to another site in a different geographic area that you have. So there's a lot of different uh, options there um, that that can be discussed. Uh, reliability and fault tolerance. You know, there's many things that can happen just on a daily basis with your equipment. If you have a server and a drive goes out, do you have redundant drives that will let you continue to operate while the, the failed drive is replaced and repaired to get you back up and running? Um, you can have, using server virtualization, you can have high availability where if an entire server goes down, it automatically comes up on uh, redundant hardware and you're up and running, you, you know, most cases you don't even know that's happened. Your IT staff or IT provider can now come in and uh, restore services on the failed equipment and then move your, your live data back over to that device. So there's lots of um, really nice high availability solutions out there if that's going to be something your business needs. What about your, your key business have you talked to them about disaster recovery plans? If you're relying on another business, maybe subcontractors, maybe suppliers for, for your critical components you produce or you sell, um, you know, if you're a medical office, who else are you dependent on? Do you have a billing service that's going to go and collect the money from you from, uh, from all of your patient encounters? Talk to them. What do they have in place? Uh, how prepared are they for a disaster? And can they assure you they will be up in a reasonable time frame so that you can continue to utilize their services in the event of a disaster? Um, if you don't think this through, you can have all the preparations in the world on your side, but if you're dependent on somebody else, um, they could let you down. So you want to be thinking about this ahead of time and, uh, and really understand where each of them are at. Okay, so now you've identified these things, you need to work on a recovery plan or a business continuity plan. Uh, this definitely takes a significant amount of effort. You know, you can search around and I'll have some resources at the end of the presentation with some uh, ideas or starting points on this, but it's this is very business specific. It needs to be very accurate for what your organization is going to need. Uh, generally, this is going to take some time from some key staff members within the organization. Uh, you may need to budget for that time and that expense to do it. If you need to bring in a third party to help out with that, there's usually some cost involved with it. It's definitely worthwhile, uh, but just recognize to do it right, it definitely is a, a significant undertaking. Part of that plan is you need to clearly define the steps that you're going to need to operate your business in the event of a disaster. What are the critical systems? What do you need to bring up? How are you going to bring that up? Where does that uh, information live so that you can bring it up? Uh, is it off-site? How do I access that? Uh, all of those things. The facility that you're going to try and operate in temporarily, where is that? How do we get to it? How do we? Who has keys to it? You know, so this is where you're going to define and document everything that you need to do to operate the business in the event of a disaster. You need to have that information posted throughout your office. You're, you should have some team or department meetings uh, where this information is communicated down to the people that need it and that are going to need to be there to help you recover those services. Uh, it shouldn't be new to them during the disaster that they need to help out and do this. They should be thinking about this ahead of time. They should understand their role. You should have some backups um, in case one of those people is out that day or out at a, a client site. Um, who's going to fill in for them if you can't reach them? So uh, this is this is information you should put together and disseminate before the actual disaster. There's nothing worse than being in a disaster and starting to think about this from square one and finding out you don't have what it takes to uh, to recover those services. The steps need to be documented. 
and identi the critical assets that we talked about a couple slides ago, the, the things that you're going to need to actually run your business, the most critical ones, you should have those written out so that everybody's focused on bringing those systems up as quickly as possible. In your business continuity plan, you need to document your key contacts, all of the vendors and contractors. Who is your internet service provider? What is their emergency contact number? You may not be able to access the web to look it up or access your accounting system vendor file to look that information up either. Um, it should be in your business continuity plan. Who do I call for internet connectivity? Who do I call for IT support? Who do I call for security of my new temporary building or facility, you know, who who do I call to get power turned on or find out when power will be restored? All these things should be documented that anything that provides a critical service to your business. And then think about uh, the employee safety through all of this in your temporary facility. You know, what are you going to need? Do you, you know, if, if power is out and you bring in generators, the generator will run great until it runs out of fuel. What if you have an extended disaster and need to run four or five days or longer? How are you going to get the fuel? Who's the contact person for that? How much fuel are you going to store on site and, and how are you going to do that safely? So that's just one example of, of some things you might need. If you need to bring in medical supplies uh, that need to be refrigerated at certain temperatures, do you have plans to do that and, and is that documented? During the disaster uh, and before the disaster, communication is key. Uh, you know, many cases, not so much so for earthquakes, but fires, hurricanes, tornadoes, you kind of see things with the forecast. Um, if there's a big storm approaching, you should be taking preparations to protect your business from that. You know, there's fire season definitely in, in California and there are different conditions and, uh, you know, we have what's called red flag warnings. If the conditions are right, really hot, low humidity, the winds are get expected to, to whip up, that's where you see the fires and they tend to spread quickly in those conditions. So, you know, just stay informed of what's going on. Um, it'll help you prepare and be ready for things. We talked about this a little before, but make sure other businesses in your network that you depend on have a disaster recovery plan. Are they ready to go? Um, what if they make a significant change to their business? How does it affect your plan? Are they moving facilities? Do they, if they change a contact number or email address or a key staff member, you should be alerted to that and update your your business continuity written plan so that that current information is in there. You got to stay in communication with your network. Um, how are you going to communicate with your partners and customers? Well, how are you going to get the news during a disaster? You should think about these things included in your plan so that everybody's on the same page. You know, how are you going to reach out to your key contractors or vendors? Uh, what if your phone system is down? Are you going to use cell phones? What if your cell phone provider's antenna in your area is down? Uh, and you don't have any kind of cell signal, what's, what's another way you can reach them? So uh, what if your supplier or key vendor's facility is also down and their phone system's down? Do you have backup numbers uh, to reach their customer service? They'll usually, if they're any kind of significant organization, have that information and uh, in the event of a disaster, the best way to reach them. So the, the time to think about that is while you're building your plan, document it in writing, and um, and you'll be in a much better position. And then once you have the plan, you should test it. Um, a plan that you don't test, you don't really have a whole lot of confidence in that it's going to work. Um, so put the plan together. Uh, again, this is part of the cost of, of creating a plan uh, is you got to spend some time with you and your staff testing the plan and seeing how it's going to go. All of those critical systems we identified, are they really able to be restored in the time frame we're expecting? Um, so the only way to know that is to actually do a test. Uh, we recommend live tests at least twice a year and uh, document the details of your test. How long did it actually take versus what you were expecting? Uh, are there any items that you found that didn't work that you're going to need to remediate? You should identify those, document them, prioritize them, and, uh, and start to take care of them, and then do another test to make sure you did a good job and they're actually uh, meeting your, your restore objectives now and, and your business can be back up and running. If there are changes, uh, you need to update your plan. A business continuity plan is a living, breathing document. It's not you prepare once and you're done. The, the, 
the brunt of the work, the, the hard part is getting that initial plan prepared, but you need to have uh, a reminder and regular updates as things change. So, you know, passwords. You know, if you have secure systems, it's likely they're going to force password changes and complex passwords to be changed every 90 days. You should update your, your secure information on that so that during a disaster, everybody knows what the latest password is that needs to have access to it. Uh, licenses. You may need to, you may find yourself having to restore from your backups onto new server equipment, and you may need to reinstall your software, and you need a license key. The time to think about that is before the disaster happens, if that's one of your critical systems, not during the disaster. You may not have access to that license key, the vendor may not be reachable, and you're not going to be able to restore that service. Do upgrades, you get new license keys, this stuff needs to be updated in your business continuity plan. Train and cross-train your employees. We talked about if you have staff that, that have a role in your uh, recovery during a disaster, what if they're not available? Who is going to fill in for them? You should have a couple of people at least for each of your major systems that know how to uh, restore that service to business. And are all the people that have been assigned to the disaster recovery tasks still with the company? We've seen plans that uh, the key people and contacts listed are no longer employed there. They've been gone for a year or more. And obviously that's not good. So uh, you need to think about that maybe in your offboarding procedure when somebody leaves the company or is terminated. That's one of the steps on your checklist are you know, did they have any role in disaster recovery, business continuity that needs to be transitioned to another staff member? So, uh, you know, as we mentioned, it's not just technologies, the people and the facilities as well. So keep that uh, in mind as you're, uh, you're updating your plan. Okay, as I mentioned, there's some good resources. Um, you can see here on the slide, the Small Business Association has some great information. Uh, we talked about the American Red Cross. They have a lot of great information on preparing you know, to take care of your employees in the event of a disaster. And then uh, FEMA itself has put together some information that's, uh, that's good. So uh, these links will be available once we post this recorded uh, to our YouTube and our website, so you can pull those down easily, or you can reach out to us, and we can uh, we can send them out to you. Okay, what um, what do you do? What, where do you start if you don't have a business continuity plan and you haven't really thought about it? Uh, a good starting point is to if if you're not the business owner, you may or senior executive within the company, you may want to share this information with them, or at least talk to them about what you've learned and understand if they're on board with creating this business continuity plan and who are the best people within the organization to do that and you're going to need information. Uh, one of the things that we can do at Apex is what we call a technical assessment. So we can come in, take a good look at your business, identify what are the critical systems that you need uh, to factor into your business continuity plan, what kind of shape are they in. You get a really nice uh, baseline report. You can see it's like a report card and we look at four different areas, inventory of your assets, security of them, reliability and sustainability across eight different layers you can see there and we give you red, yellow, green at an executive level and you can you can see where you're at and then build plans to get in a, a much better shape for this. Um, we're going to identify where you're at now, where should you be compared to industry best practices and then very importantly how do you get there. Uh, what's the gaps? Where, where do you fall short? Uh, and then you as an organization can take that information, uh, prioritize it, uh, build it into your one, three, or five-year IT budget and start uh, resolving those gaps so that you're in a much better position in the event of a disaster. You can use your own internal team to do those projects or do those remediation activities. You can uh, put an RFP out for organizations to do that. You could hire a company like Apex. So there's a lot of great information that would come out of a technical assessment uh, that you can use as a starting point to your business continuity plan. As I mentioned, this is uh, number five in a series of six webinars. So on August 18th, we'll be holding the final one, which is best practices for your DR planning and testing. So we'll actually get into some specific 
elements of your plan in more detail and some of the elements around testing the plan and things you want to look for during that testing. So there'll be some great information and as I mentioned there's uh, the previous webinars which have great information as well are all recorded and posted to our website and YouTube page. Okay, Stuart will uh, let us know if anybody has asked any questions. This is a good time to do that if you have any. Yeah, George, we have, uh, we have quite a few questions that came in. I'm just going to uh, get them all organized here and then uh, ask away. So the first question comes to us uh, from uh, her name is Julie, and Julie's in Reading. Uh, she wants to know, George, what is the difference between a business continuity plan and a disaster recovery plan? Okay, Julie, that's a great question. We touched on it a little bit, uh, and we did in more detail in one of the earlier webinars, but a disaster recovery plan is a component of a business continuity plan. So the disaster recovery plan will have the specific systems and steps um, documented on bringing them back up into service so that you're, they're available for your, your staff members and your customers to utilize in providing your services. A business continuity plan, of course, needs that, uh, but it also handles the people and the facility assets and everything else you're going to need to actually run your business during or immediately after a disaster. So uh, you're going to need these IT systems up and running that the disaster recovery plan should, should handle, but you're also going to need the communications, where do you operate uh, out of a temporary facility, if your main facility has been damaged, how are you going to communicate with your clients and your uh, key vendors or suppliers or electric company, all of that is, is wrapped up into the business continuity plan and, uh, and really is the guide for running your business during or after a disaster. Great question. Yeah, I thought it was a good question too, George. So, so Stan, who runs a small business out in Chico, one of the guys we probably met with a few weeks ago when we were doing our Dell Sonic Wall event down there a couple weeks ago, he wanted to know, George, uh, he has a cloud backup service, and I, I think he mentioned uh, it was uh, something like Carbonite. Uh, would that work in a disaster? Cloud backup services are, are a good thing. You need to think about how it would work for your business and what you're going to need from it. Um, in our experience, Carbonite is a file level, file by file backup. Uh, as you create new files and change existing files, they're sent off site, um, which is great, uh, but it's not the best from a disaster recovery and business continuity standpoint because it takes a long time to restore. We've actually had uh, organizations call us um, that have Carbonite. They've lost a server drive or uh, files and they need to recover them and you know we had to look there was like 12,000 files we had to download and it actually took several days to get all those files there was many failures we had to start over and um, in order to recover the server you have to go buy new server hardware that meets your requirements that could take a few days you have to now load the server operating system from scratch uh, install all of your software, hopefully you have the license keys like we talked about today, and then you can put your files, your data files back on so they can be accessed by your staff and those applications. That tends to be a very long and drawn out process. There are other cloud-based solutions that essentially take snapshots of your servers during the backups and those are off-site and you're able to actually spin up the entire image of the server in the cloud and access it from any temporary location where you have an internet connection and you're not waiting for days to get new hardware for your IT provider or your IT staff to re rebuild your server and, and now download all of that data. You are up and running you know, within 10 to 20 minutes and uh, you have the data in the cloud available to you as of your most recent backup. So, um, so cloud backup is very good. You just need to think about what's important for your business, what are your restore time objectives that we talked about in an earlier webinar, and uh, how long you can afford to be down. What's the cost of that downtime, and how many clients might you lose if they're not able to access your information or your services. Yeah, so some good points there, George. And the last question that we have, uh, it's uh, somebody who's uh, finding what you're just talking about a little overwhelming. Uh, they just want to know, what should they start with? Sure. Yeah, this is uh, this is definitely uh, something that 
uh, and, and especially in a small and medium business, you probably don't have dedicated staff that this is their full-time job, so it's usually somebody being saddled with this responsibility in addition to their normal activities. So uh, it can be overwhelming. Um, as I mentioned a couple of slides ago here, the technical assessment is a really good place to start. Um, you'll get a lot of key information identified from something of that nature that you can use as a starting point or at least the information to help convince um, the senior leaders of the organization or the business owner that they need to do this and they need to think about these things before a disaster. Uh, so that's a really good place to start. And then uh, some of these resources that I mentioned and uh, there are other good pieces of information out on, on the internet, but these are some core ones that you can trust and um, you know they've, they've been involved in, in disasters and business continuity for quite a while. So. Uh, that's where I would suggest starting. Hey, good points, George. So that, that wraps up all the questions that came in uh, for us today. Um, anything else you want to add there, George, before we uh, wrap up today's webinar? Uh, nope. Just want to thank everybody for attending. Uh, please share this information if you found it helpful or you think others in your organization may be in position to, uh, to help drive it forward. You can reach us at uh, our website, www.apex.com. Give us a ring at 800-310-2739 or send us an email at info at apex.com. And look forward to uh, seeing you on the next webinar. Which I do believe, George, is on August the 18th at the 10 o'clock Pacific time, if I remember correctly. Yep, that's correct. All right, George, thank you very much for that awesome information. And uh, thank you, everyone, again, for attending today. Thank you. Mm -hmm.